The work of the paraclete. Let's look at some of those things we've talked. He testifies of Christ, John 15, 26. He testifies about Christ. That's his preoccupation. So that's why when he comes in into us in the new birth, Christ becomes very real to us. Have you seen there are people? Have you seen people that that when Christ, when they get saved, their family will do everything in their power to have witnessed such things to pull them back? Are you here? People will persecute them even in their place of work. I remember when I was working my first job after graduation, after youth service, I was working with an architect in an architectural firm. And I was witnessing to everybody. Then, the, one day my boss came to me where I was working on some designs. He said, oh, when I've had, I heard your, you've been preaching in this office. I said, yes, sir. He said, I will not allow you to convert anybody. <laughs> That's what he actually told me. But when he finished speaking, I was so grieved, honestly. When he finished speaking, I was so grieved. So I left there, I went to the boardroom. I knelt down there, first, God, look at what this man said. <laughs> Get people saved in this office. Start from his secretary. Believe me, when I witnessed to the secretary, she got saved. And she just took off like a rocket. Just took off on fire. <laughs> and then he sacked her. <laughs> and within three weeks, she got a better job. That she told me she got a job that was paying her three times what he was paying her. Praise God. What became, people would rather lose their jobs than renounce Christ. What makes Christ so real to them is the Holy Spirit testifying and making him real. You know, in 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, Who have not seen yet we love? What makes you think you love Christ so much? You're ready to come and fellowship with him. You're ready to pray. You're, you're, you're ready to defend him if somebody... Blasphemes you. Do you know? Do you understand what I mean? But you never saw him. Who has made Christ so real to you in a personal way? The Holy Spirit. He testifies about Christ. And he bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Are you here? So he testifies of Christ. That's one of his main works. And makes Christ real to us. Then, number two, he glorifies Christ. He glorifies Christ. John 16, 14, and 15. He glorifies Christ. He honors Christ. He esteems Christ. He esteems Christ as glorious. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. He glorifies Christ. He doesn't draw attention to himself, and that's another pitfall in working with him. Remember why he's a gentleman. That could be a pitfall for some people. And why doesn't the Holy Spirit stop him? Stop me. Did you ask him to help you? Did you call him in? Please, are you still here? Did you call him in? So, he glorifies Christ. He does not glorify himself. He does not glorify man. Whenever you see man being exalted out of measure to the point that it's like worship, it's wrong. We must honor people. We must respect people. But the Holy Spirit glorifies Christ, not himself. And so, it's easy to lose consciousness of his person and presence. Are you here? Because he's always promoting Christ. But he, the Holy Spirit is to be worshipped. He's Jehovah. And you must give him the honor due to him, the worship due to him. When God does certain things to you or in your life, and you begin to thank the Holy Spirit, he will rather point you to thanking the Father who sent him. Are you here? Than taking the glory for what has happened. He would rather the glory goes to Christ and the Father. 
So he doesn't point to himself. So he sees it to lose consciousness of the fact that he's there. He's so gentle and doesn't point at attention. Let me tell you, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and not know it. Are you here? It can happen. You can, but a lot of times when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, a lot of people, you will know that something has happened. But you can be filled with the Holy Spirit without knowing it. And when he leaves a person, that person will not know when he left. The person will still be moving. Like this fan is on, if, when you put it on, and they turn off the power supply, it will continue rotating. Are you here? But it's been cut off from the supply of power. After some time, it begins to wind down. When the Holy Spirit left Samson, he didn't know. You remember Samson? And, you know, don't ever, don't walk in fear that the Holy Spirit might leave you, but leave sin alone and he will not leave you. Don't walk in that fear. David, one of his main concerns when he sinned was, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So when he leaves, you may not know. And you still think you're on. He shook himself and, and, and wanted to act as before. He, that the Bible says he did not know that the Holy Spirit, that God had left him, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit had left him. So he lives gently. You won't even notice. So he glorifies Christ. He testifies of Christ. And so if you're going to walk with him, you have to recognize him by yourself. 